Another Ramadan is refreshed by Coca-Cola and nourished by Checkers Custard. Uh, many of us were raised in homes where conflict were not permitted. So people come to groups and when there's any issue of conflict, you see all sisters saying, let's, in short, let's put it under the carpet. And the problem with that is that the thing continues to build up because when you don't deal with it, it when you don't resolve it, it continues yeah, to get worse. And recurrent. that's where uh, I believe that the wounds come from. So by the time you've built something that's been pulling on the carpet for a long time. Eventually, somebody is going to fall on the carpet and everything will bust and the wounds start to come out. However, despite that, one of the greatest lessons that I learned with my biggest trial with sisterhood was understanding that Shaitan's favorite thing is to disperse us. Mm. True. So yeah, that's true. I remember lying in my bed that and That guy, crying. that's all he does. <laughs> <laughs> like just cut out because he knows that together we are formidable. Yes. Enjoy the delicious creamy goodness of cowbell with Vitarich and vitamin B9 which supports brain development. Cowbell, so creamy, so good. In Ramadan, we are all connected. We all have the same empathy towards one another. We all feel the same rush to catch the moment of iftar and walk into the same special home-cooked meals. Every Ramadan, we are one when we fast, but not always when we break fast. This Ramadan, let's break fast together. Coca-Cola, real wonder. Welcome back to the talk segment of another Ramadan TV series. We've been talking to our sister, Sister Mutia. She said a lot about our sisterhood. To watch other episodes of this episode, please give us a follow on our Instagram at another Ramadan TV series. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at another Ramadan TV. You know, Sister Mutia, this sisterhood that we're talking about, it still makes me remember something. I was going from science. I'm sent to the University of Lagos. I was going from science to DLI with my cosmetics. And then we we on the way we kept on seeing sisters in the job and I was just like, Sam alaikum, salam alaikum, alaikum, alaikum salam. Although I met the ones I knew, but most of the people I saw there, I didn't know them. And then my friend Francis, he was like, Does that mean if I see any guy coming, I'll be like, boss, I hello. Rosalie, like, why do I have to greet a lot of people? Please, um, on this note, do you have anything to say to people that are shy to greet their fellow Muslims out there, or people that when you greet them, it will be hard for them to open their mouth to to reply with Teslim? Uh, okay. Uh, so to answer Francis, why we have to keep greeting ourselves is to hoil the machine. Yeah. That is our sisterhood. Absolutely. Because greeting is powerful, right? Yes, it, it is. It is a powerful thing. And if Francis was Yoruba, she would understand that Yoruba people greet more than Muslims. <laughs> like we literally get somebody a kujoko just for sitting. A kueno. <laughs> you are eating. <laughs> like you are fasting and people are greeting you. A <laughs> we, we have greeting for practically everything. And what that does is that it, build, it bonds. It's strengthening the bonds between us. 
because it is a social greeting is a social tool. And uh, the Prophet uh, also Salaam. said that uh, spread <coughs> the greetings of peace amongst you. So there is nothing wrong uh, saying to Slim three times, ten times mm. in a day within with the same person. You open the door, Salaam Alaikum, and left the place. I come back again, so say Salaam Alaikum. And so, it's a beautiful thing that the testimony is a prayer. Mm -hmm. So if I feel like I don't have peace inside my chest, <laughs> I just look for somebody to greet that can greet me back. Yeah. And yeah. when you say a prayer for me, the angel say, I mean, for you too and for me and that's, that's, uh, that's it. So how, and the other part of the question is for those people who find it, uh, who are shy, I think, like I said, to greet, and to greet people, people that will not return the greeting. Maybe those ones were in Khimar and they feel like you're just putting on scarves and... I think I think that's a myth. Yes. Personally, I think that's a myth. That's a and myth. And here's what I, when I've got to myth, work, like, a myth is it, that it's, everybody it's, just keeps saying that saying it. It, it's not real, just it's like not true. I've, I've, I've experienced you. You've had people that you greeted that didn't answer. Exactly. You uh, like Nicole. Okay. It's, those. it's not, I'm sorry, sorry. Um, it's a sister thing, but <laughs> I can, I can, I can chip in something here. It's a myth because some people would say, oh, there are the people that have the, the jilbab. There are some people that would even say it that your own style of hijab or jilbab, uh, they are people who are snobbish, mm. you know. Mm. So I think it is just a a, a buffer. So does it or exist? Yes, I believe it does. It but does here's the thing about you. We're, we're talking it. about how to protect ourselves from sister wound the other time, and one of the things that I say is that what Islam says is to give people excuses. Mm. I think a lot of times we don't give people excuses. See, you see a sister wearing full came out on our way to class, she's probably 10 minutes late. Our entire mind is on the trouble that she's in. However loud your Taslim is to someone who is dealing with some trauma or the other, they can hear you, they can see you. But because she's wearing the hijab, fortunately for her, she's a symbol of answer by fire by force. Mm. So I think that, mm. I call it a myth because I don't think there's anyone who will say, because you're not wearing hijab, I won't answer it. And then the person no, does not understand sense. Islam enough to understand that your greeting, like I said the other time, your greeting is not compulsory. Like you may choose not to greet, right? However, well, the moment you greet me, my response is wajib. Is wajib. Is wajib. I have to respond to you. It becomes a debt if I don't respond. So I don't yeah. think that anybody who is conscious about Islam enough to wear the full kimal and maybe even use the niqab will now understand the simple principle that i mean children in baby class in illegal know and not answer you. and not answer uh, dear sister uh, sorry to cut your shirt let's get to the gen z now identity crisis you're a life coach you 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 have mentored uh, young and upcoming sisters and uh, how do how do you deal with having identity crisis as a muslima you know, you know, going out there and donning a hijab, that's what they do all their lives, you know. But when it comes to corporate world, you know, attending interviews or being in a setup and then they compromise, how do you deal with this? Do you have any um, uh, inferences? Well, for somebody that almost had to compromise and then gave up something, uh, so we, we need to understand that we don't live in an ideal Islamic world. I mean, this is a secular country. Oh, uh, oh, shall, shall, shall we say multi-religious country? Multi, multi-religious, yes. And so what that means, and unfortunately, whether we want to be political for it or not, we, the hijab does come with some backlash, you know, some judgment, even from Muslims. And you put in Quite a 16-year-old who many of these Gen Z's, here's where the problem started. Many of these children went to Muslim schools their whole life. So your primary school was Muslim, uh, secondary school was Muslim, and then the child entered uh, Yunlag. And for the first time in her life, she's coming across a community that doesn't get a hijab. A community that is not even or just a community that resists her from... A, a community that doesn't that doesn't even like Aija. Hmm. So a lot of those children have not been taught. They have not learned 
the the rest, the way to they have not learned the need to fight back until they get to that situation. Mm. Unlike many of us millennials, we went to I mean, how many Muslim schools were available when we were growing up? I didn't I didn't go to Muslim school. Okay, so good for you. But majority of these children pulling their hijabs that you say, Oh, she was a hijabi at home, many of them were, you know, even if they don't go to Muslim schools, mm -hmm. they grew up with what we have, what we millennials have that our parents don't have. I think more millennials are hijabis than yes. our parents. Yes. And we mm. we had MSS. True. Thank and you MSS anyone. grew, you know, the peak of what MSS did was in the 90s. And so we had yes. MSS. So many of these children grew up, even if they are, school, I don't know, most of them grew up in Muslim schools, but even for those who didn't, their parents had circles of friends like that. They've never really interacted with uh in a circle that that, do not that doesn't accept, accept the hijab the hijab mm. so by the time so it's a big deal for them it's just like me when i went to service i did not know that hijab was a problem until i went to service subhanallah and this is me that actually had parents who told me at the start that ha you want to become al-qaeda at the time it was al-qaeda <laughs> and you know so i yeah. thought that my parents yeah. were so when they took me to the north, I was sure that I'm going to the north. What's the worst that happened? What's the worst that happened? And then I entered camp, and there were people from everywhere in camp, and people were judging me for my job. I didn't even know because I didn't care. Until it became a problem, and people were like, I didn't know you because I saw Muslim women can speak English. So Muslim no, women, no, no, and no, they no, were no, not no, going no, to no, let no. me audition for the OBS, the orientation, the camp radio, because I was wearing a job. And I was like, this is, see me. Like human rights activists, I was telling them that this is federal government. This is a federal government something. I have every right. There's right of religion. There's right of association. And I literally fought my way through. And that was when it was clear. But because I grew up, I went to FGC. So if I'm a bully by product, not that I'm a bully, like you will, be, you will learn to yeah. push back. So a lot of these girls, though, they've never been in that situation that their values have been tested Mm -hmm. enough for them to, to now to stand, stand, stand their ground defend your rights so those are the first tests and for me i'm always very gentle with them because that face will pass what i tell their parents when i have conversations that see the cops that you have poured between zero to seven that child you have raised from zero to 13 is still there when push come to shove your child will go back to the initial uh what you know what the initial what do they call the initial they will go back to the default and that's why many of them actually come back to the job and by the time they're coming back they don't go back to small one that they were using you know, they go all the way and you're thinking oh now she has studied so sometimes if, and i i personally think that it's okay to be lost so that they have an appreciation mm -hmm. of what they have and so that fear that people have what if what if yes we, maybe what we need to do now is to start exposing them to situations where their hijab right. will be questioned so that we understand the level of understanding that that child has. The child that will remove hijab in 100 level, add, maybe you need 50% to hold on to the hijab. That child had 100%. The only reason the hijab was on was because they have never faced a challenge that challenged the hijab. On the final note, Sister Mutia, can you please tell us the things that sisters need to do to strengthen the bond among us? Okay, so uh, bring it down to three. The first one, of course, is to love ourselves for our sake. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not easy to love people <laughs> sometimes, but then we remember that this person is... Uh, you know, this person is just forgive and that includes forgiving ourselves just like you are going to go to the mosque the next time look for that particular sister and greet her lila and continue to greet her lila or maybe even check up on her to say that every time i greet you you always find me is there something do you need any help yeah instead of concluding that she's a frowner or she hates me she may actually be going through a lot so let's uh love ourselves lila and uh, next one is to fear allah Ah, we need to fear Allah. <laughs> this is a conversation <laughs> or it's told. We need to fear Allah. Fear what, Allah. In our dealings with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, all of us are. I think that there's a yoruba -ness, there's a yausa -ness in all of us that comes from the way we were raised. But when we deal with ourselves, let's fear Allah. It's okay to not like me, Tiat. But don't say because you don't like me, you will lie. 
It's okay. I, I don't like to chat. Cook up something. I cook up something. Or agree with someone that you know. Now what the person is saying, you know, some people you be saying something right. like, uh mm? mm. I don't like the mm. too, but the mutter that I know. I no, I can't. It's not even about even testifying. If you are not there, don't testify. Yeah. Don't mm. add mouth. Don't spread. Don't spread G's. Don't just fear Allah. And then finally, uh one one of the things that helps me to stop judging people is to recognize that we all have different models of the world. And we are not the same. The way we do things are going to be different. So let's allow people themselves. Allow people, give people room to be. There's no one way. Even when we recite the Quran, there are different uh, ways to kill, Rewi- or different, different to read uh, it. Rewire, yeah. So you are not going to say that. So for me, for instance, if anybody asks me, am I a full, am I a Kibar, right? Yes, I'm wearing full hijab. Because all the seven guidelines of the full hijab I follow. But somebody will say, because it's not a Kibar, that is... And I'm like, how? There are different models of the world. There's a, there are different ways that people will be. I think we should allow ourselves room to be. And correct, Allah said that we should correct with what? A certain knowledge, wisdom, wisdom. And I use it for us. I mean, Jazakallah, Kaira, Sister Mutiat. She has said the Lord, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to preserve her for so we can hear more of this from her next time. So on behalf of everyone in the studio, I say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Enjoy the delicious creamy goodness of cowbell with Vitarich and vitamin B9 which supports brain development. Cowbell, so creamy, so good. Assalamu alaikum, Muslim dunya baki daya. Lokacin sahur ko bude baki ku kasance tare da Chakas Custard. Domin Chakas Custard ya dace da masu yin azumi. Ramadan Mubarak Masuyana. Allah, there's only one God and we are the children of Adam. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of the Kiddies segment of another Ramadan TV series. This episode is promises to be very interesting. It's an activity session. We're doing the five pillars game. My children, are you ready? Yes! Okay, that's good. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Welcome back. So this segment is the trivia segment and inshallah, I'm sure it's going to be interesting. My, uh, the boys, I'm sure you're excited. Yes! Okay. Girls, are you excited? Yes! Well? Okay, so this is not a, a team game, but it's just to get you guys all excited. So yes, um, let's start. Once I, um, read, once I read the question, the first person to raise his hand will get to take um, the question. All right? Yeah. Bismillah. Bismillah. Okay, so who was the first man to accept Islam? Mm, nice try, but no. Who else wants to go? No. No, no. Nice try. Who wants to go? Yes, Jawad. Prophet Ibrahim. Um, okay, thank you, everyone. So the first man, Islam was revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam officially. So the first man to accept to Islam that. was Abu Bakr. After it was revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, oh, I should have mentioned that. that oh, Next yeah. time you can only say that. Thank you very much. Which chapter is known as the mother of the Quran? Yes, Jawad. Surah Fatiha. Mashallah. Correct. Oh. So, Bismillah again. Who was the first woman to accept Islam? It was you, then you. No woman. Nice try again. Mashallah. Well done. So, who's the first woman to accept Khadija. Islam? Khadija Wajalani. Mashallah. Well done. <coughs> so, next question. Um, 
who was the mother of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know the master? Let's have it. Eve. No, well done, nice try. Eve is our yes, first mother, but she's not the mother of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes. Zanab. Nice try, but she's not the mother of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What? Prophet Muhammad's mother. Okay, don't worry. Let's keep going. Yes? Aisha. Nice try, but she's not the mother it? of... Nobody got it. So I'll have to say... I didn't say anything. Yes, you didn't say anything. Do you want to answer? Uh, I'll take it about it. Okay, keep Can thinking. Sure. No? Oh, Halima. Nice try. Halima was I the foster mother. I but the mother of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Amina. Amina. Yes. Amina, yes. So... Who is buried directly next to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What? You raised your hand first. Is yes. His father. Sorry? Is his father. No. Nice try. Bilal. No. Nice try. <laughs> not me. Not you. Yes, not you. <laughs> nice. Yes. Khadija. Khadija, no. Nice try. Yes. His uncle. His uncle, no. Nice try. <gasps> Was I no. His auntie, no, next. No, yeah, no. It was the last prophet, so there's no way another prophet was buried next to him. Yes? The Kaaba. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. That's final attempt, yes. Um, Abu Bakr. Masha Abu Bakr is a dick. Yes, well Isn't done. That so good? No, he's yeah. his best friend. Ah. Yes. Okay, so the next question is. What is the name given to the year in which Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born? You raised your hand too quickly. I hope you have the answer. The, year the, of, name, the, the name of the year, name given to the year Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born. Not the year he was born, the name, the year is called. Phil. Mashallah, yes. The year of the elephants. Yeah, yes, the elephants. Yes, beautiful. Do you know why it's called the year of the elephants? Yes. Okay, can you tell us? Yes, I know. Yeah. So, I, like, it's because the, there was a king. Who wanted to destroy the Kaaba? King Abra, yes. Abra, who wanted to destroy the Kaaba, so everyone would go to his own like yes, place yes, of worship. Yes. And then by the time they are about to destroy the Kaaba, the elephant he used he elephants as elephant, yes. transportation. Yes. So the King Abra used um, elephants. He marched like lots of elephants on their way to destroy the Kaaba, but Allah sent help using beds with stones and clay to destroy them. And that was the from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born. Okay, so the final question for this segment is drum roll. Du -du 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 -du. Which prophet was able to communicate with animals? Prophet Dawood. Nice try. Prophet Noah. Nice try. He worked with animals, yes. Yes. Prophet Suleiman. Mashallah, Prophet Suleiman. So Dawood is the father of Suleiman. You can still say it. So who's the prophet that could communi communicate with animals? Prophet Suleiman. Masha Allah. So well done, everybody. Okay, it's been an exciting one. Who won? Uh, we, 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 we all won. Masha Allah. We, 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 we all have we all have so what 5, do we say? points. Yes, 5,000 points. So what do we say? We are all words? Winners. winners. So winners at home, thank you for participating. Yes, it's not, I didn't make a mistake. I know you have viewers at home, but I believe we are all winners. So if you've been participating, you're a winner as well. Thank you for participating in this. And look forward to seeing you next time on another episode of... The Kiddies Segment. Thank you very much. Masalam. In Ramadan, we are all connected. We all have the same empathy towards one another. We all feel the same rush to catch the moment of iftar and walk into the same special home-cooked meals. Every Ramadan, we are one when we fast, but not always when we break fast. This Ramadan, let's break fast together. Coca-Cola, real wonder. Assalamu alaikum musulmin duniya baki daya lokacin sahur ko bude baki ku kasance tare da chakas custard domin chakas custard ya dace da masu yin azumi ramadan mubarak masu yana
tum 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 Ramadan Mubarak to my Muslim brothers and sisters. I'm here again and I'm welcoming you to another kitchen segment of another Ramadan TV series. So today I'll be making something unusual. Yeah, pancake. I'll be making a hot meal banana pancake. So here we have a oatmeal, uh, three medium eggs, some bananas, uh, milk, cinnamon, and a baking soda, a vegetable oil, and a maple syrup. So firstly, I'll wash my hands. Dum, 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 dum. So firstly, we mix all our dry ingredients in a bowl. So hell yeah, I said a uh, whole me is a healthy option. Why? Now I'll give you some of the health benefits of oatmeal, which is one, it lowers our cholesterol level. It is anti-cancer effect and anti-diabetic actions. So we've added a one and a half cup of oatmeal, add a pinch of salt so yes you mix all your dry ingredients together then in your blender you crack your eggs and your banana So we'll add up all our wet ingredients and this is the milk, then we blend. So now in the same blender, you add all your dry ingredients. Then we blend again. So our pancake mix is ready. This should be the consistency. So we'll light our burner. So our oatmeal and banana pancake is ready as you can see so we'll be doing a little bit of garnish. I'll be making use of the banana so drop it And we'll drizzle a bit of her syrup. Dum, 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 dum. So our oatmeal and banana pancake is ready. As you can see, I hope you love it. Thanks for watching again. Bye.
Another Ramadan is refreshed by Coca-Cola and nourished by Checkers Custard. Love your brothers and sisters, revive 